within Day County. You don't want to get locked up at the state. You know what I'm saying? It's not the right. same as here. It's very different. And that woke me up. Now I'm in a, a couple movies. You might find me in some movies. You know, Hulu, on, on Tubi, there's a joint called Rack Aids. Mm -hmm. Y'all gonna love that. It's about scamming it. Got some shit called For the Gram. Uh, I'm on some shit with Gravy. I've been popping out in Paris in some videos with Lil Duval. Like I said, my phone yeah. ringing. Hey everybody, welcome to the Bounce Back Podcast. I'm your host, B. Luke. I got special guests with me today. Why don't you tell the people your name, where you're from, and a little bit about yourself, bro. Boston Cheese, you know what I'm saying? Mattapan favorite, Mattapan guard from Mattapan originally. Now I live in Atlanta, working with music, acting, cannabis, everything above the sort, you know what I'm saying? Motivation to the hood type shit. You know what I mean? So tell me a little bit about uh, Mattapan growing up for you, bro. What was uh, that like? Mattapan, you know, I'm Haitian. So that's where all this, you know what I mean? That's, that's where all disease is at. So, you know what I mean? Um, and growing up Haitian, was different. There was like a culture, de a clash between Americans and mm -hmm. Haitians. I feel like just island in period, but Mattapan's home. That's why I always felt home. Yeah, it's the hood, so everything's going on. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but yeah, that's home. I think that's why I play ball that. You know what I mean? We bled that, we breathed that, we hustled that. All the Haitians is there, the food, the culture. That's why I love. That's why I still come okay. home just for that. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Go, go. And Mattapan type shit. Yeah. What, what generation? From Haiti, are you like first born generation okay. born here? So you know there was that disconnect from me being just the first one here, yeah. and them being Haitian and speaking Creole. You know, my mm -hmm. uncle, I got deported for a while, and now, like I said, there was that culture clash, fighting and some more shit. So yeah, it was very independent. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? In the streets, figuring out your way, making shit happen. They have no like. Gotcha. Family that overstood what the fuck was going in on. In the streets. Yeah, yeah, why niggas is outside fighting and different mm. shit, hustling, you know what I mean? Niggas finding guns, knives, all type of shit at a very young age. And in Boston, we get active real young, like, you know what I mean? We was, I was doing shit real young. Real, real young. <laughs> Even yeah. now, I'm looking like, damn, like, we niggas was like 12. <laughs> yep. What the fuck was we doing outside with hammers and shit? Like, that shit's crazy. So what's, like, the household? Like, what kind of values are being instilled at the home. Being in the Haitian household is very strict. They on everything. So it's almost like living like a double life. Showing your people's one way, but then being outside, being able to hold your own in another way. That's kind of how it is. I mean, growing up being Haitian, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Other family members that over here as well? Uh, I have like cousins and shit, distant cousins and shit like that. Okay. Um, but you know, we all spread out. And you know how Boston is. Boston kind of like separated from hood, blocks, mm -hmm. corners. So right. it's like niggas being tapped in. But you know, being Haitian and that shit is also a bond. So it bonds a lot of us together and shit. And we've been, you know what I mean, been yeah. able to grow since them days. You know what I mean? With my uncle growing mm -hmm. up in the 80s and shit like that now. Niggas think it's cool to be Haitian, yeah, right, you know what I'm right. saying? So it's a whole nother vibe, but that really just came from niggas sticking together and uh, staying on our shit, you know what I mean, type shit. What about like languages spoken at home? Is English the primary language you used growing up nah, at home? It was, it was more Creole at the crib. Um, mm -hmm. It was English with me kind of, but you know what I mean, offset. So, you know, like I said, there was that cultural difference. But you know, when, with growing up with school and shit, that kind of helped because niggas ain't really understand right. what the fuck going on. So. What about your parents? How were they with the the English? Did they adapt quickly? Or? Nah, nah. My mom still got an accent. She been here forever. Right. You know what I mean? And pop wasn't around, so you got know you. what I mean. And mom's at work, so really, it's just really adapting to the streets out there. Really, that's what it was. What about brothers and sisters? You, nah, I'm an only you? child, so okay. you know what I mean. Like that's just how. I was so what? So what's that like? Is this, is that what, how you got into the music kind of thing? Not having like a sibling to play with? Maybe you got to kind of do your own thing? Or when does that? Um, music came in a little bit later. Okay. We was in the streets throwing parties and shit. You know what I mean? Me and all my niggas and shit. And uh, I'll say maybe your only child made me outside more. Mm -hmm. Figuring shit out more. And me being connected with different people made me leave my hood and yeah. be able to travel to different hoods. So I was, I've always really been connected. So what were kind of the, I mean, the, the male influences in your life? Uh, now that your dad honestly, wasn't around, all my or was it with like... end up getting like locked up, was doing bids. One of my uncles got deported, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So really was outside dolo, but luckily, like I said, I was young in the mix with a lot of real niggas. Started hustling early, you know what I mean? Like I got my first pound at 12, you know what I'm saying? Damn. Like so I was around those type of niggas though, like real plugs, not like I paid for a pound. I was around real right, plugs, right, right. learned the game, you know what I mean? And um, even those niggas used to try to keep me on track. Feel me? Yeah. And be like, yo, cheese, the streets is here forever. 
go do what you got to do. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I would play ball. I would do whatever the fuck I got to do. And that kind of, a lot of moments, you know what I mean? By the grace of God, always slept me, you know what I mean? Crept me out of situations. You know what I mean? And like I said, if it wasn't for my older niggas really talking with me like, yo, nah, cheese, like, mm-hmm. go handle your shit. Your niggas going to be your nigga regardless. You know what I mean? Because I was jumping off the cliff, hanging with niggas every minute. You know what I mean? Finding about disloyalty. You know what I mean? Jumping off, seeing niggas together. You know, Mm -hmm. crashing out a lot of different ways because a lot of niggas is outside just to be outside trying to figure it out. You know what I mean? So so you need that older, you know what I mean? Like you need them older eyes kind of like pointing you in the right direction. So I was blessed to have that around. So you said you're getting like your first pee at 12. What what age you start like smoking weed? We would smoke. I was smoking around like 12 type shit. You know what I'm saying? And me just being around so much niggas in the movement is what ended up getting me get bags dropped off. And you know mm-hmm. what I mean? I was cool with older niggas, so everybody always thought I was older. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I was 12, <laughs> but I'm like six foot tall. Yeah, yeah, You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, too late, I end up getting the V. I'm in the car at 14, 15, so mm-hmm. a nigga ain't thinking a nigga's that young type shit. You know what I mean? They're thinking I'm older, and plus I'm bringing it back. I'm not moving it alone. I'm Haitian. I believe right. in togetherness. I ain't just get a pack and fucking... Feel like nah, I had mad little niggas that busted all down. You know what I mean? Like, nigga did. You know what I mean? What I was supposed to do? What kind of things were you doing with your money at that age? You just putting it all back into it and kind of getting. We were doing neck- dumb shit. You know what I mean? We was honestly buying little hotels in Norwood and buying. You know what I mean? Because we were young. Stuff, yeah. Little dumb shit going down Route One, but we had some good times running around. But a lot of niggas caught cases. A lot of shit was happening at the same time. You know what I mean? A lot of um, police getting to know who you are. You get what I'm saying? You getting stopped, niggas picking up petty cases. We wasn't doing the right shit. So talk to me about school. You playing ball throughout your whole yeah, kind of ball. career? Junior year, didn't get a, get a, ended up getting kicked off because I got caught a case, okay. some more shit. You know what I mean? I thought it was going to be bigger than what it was. You know what I mean? Coach was bugging, but yeah. ended up back on the squad doing my thing or whatever the case may be. So it was a lot going on. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Even I watching the city divide, niggas you was cool with. Growing up, like I said, me being around everywhere playing ball, and now we older. You yeah. know what I mean? There's a lot of the division that was coming in, in the city, niggas getting hit. You know what I mean? Shit left and right. So was that your first case? That one you're talking about in yep. high school? Yeah, yep. Kind of. What was that about? It was a big case. I got like uh, caught with like a QP and shit with my man three mm-hmm. in the morning somewhere. We riding around. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, he had a he already had a charge and shit. They was watching this type shit. So okay. for me, that really fucked me up because I was trying to play the ball vision. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that ended up just keep coming back. You know, you're on probation and you got different shit popping up yeah, in and yeah. out. So yeah, that was the first like little case for me. Do you think it's tough shit. to kind of have that like one foot in, one foot out? It seemed like a juggling act. No, and it it's kinda definitely caught up a, to you. it's definitely a juggling act. But I don't even feel like it was one foot in. I was just doing what. What you do. I know to do. Right. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Was Niggas that a wake-up call around. for you? About to lose this basketball thing. Yep, type you know shit. What I mean? Type so shit. Like, I mean, ah. Or was that it just make you move different? <laughs> it, yeah, it was make move smarter. Mm-hmm. It was move smarter, move harder, but move smarter. You get what I'm saying? Like I said, I was young. I ended up getting some lawyers, you know what I mean? We ended mm-hmm. up making that happen how it happened. I was able to go off to college and kind of <laughs> sidestep side a play yeah. on that. But it, but, up, but it let me know that, yo, you got to stay busy and stay active and you got to hold both hands. How long is college the plan? Is that... Well, that was... Basketball brought me there. When do you know, like, this is what I want to do? Niggas was playing ball. Niggas thought we was going D1, going to West You know what I mean? Niggas mm-hmm. thought we was going D1. So I ended up going to Dean and Franklin. Yeah, that shit just rolled on. We was doing college parties and shit. Yeah. Anyway, we was, we was in them parties having fun, bringing the streets to them parties too. You know what I'm saying? Back in those days. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, what? We just doing what we do, my nigga. Seizing mm-hmm. the opportunity mm-hmm. every moment. <laughs> so talk I mean? about your college experience, man. That's scary, college was man. lit. Um, where did where, like what is this in Mass? Yeah, yeah, still? Mass. Like I said, I went to Dean. Like I said, even before. So where is that though? Is that Dean's West? in Franklin? No, Franklin Mass. Dean's in okay, Franklin so Mass. Are you living out there? Yeah, in yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't my first time. Like I said, like, we was young and in the mix. So and even then, I was throwing parties and like I said, we was doing a lot of shit early. Mm-hmm. Like I was already banned from a college from Fisher College before I went to college. So how's that, how's that happen? You know what I'm saying? Nah, <laughs> cause, niggas, Cause niggas throwing party, bringing drugs on campus, niggas selling yeah. shit, muscling shit, just being niggas, yeah. niggas on campus. Right. <laughs> you know so you bring, a, you bring a dudes from the streets? Yeah, yeah, we going on campus. Yeah, oh, of course. We used to, I used to love doing that. And I used to bring niggas away, really to motivate niggas. Yeah. You know what I mean? RIP a couple of my niggas, I used to bring them over and I used to, you know what I mean? I used to try to 
change niggas' thoughts about shit. So you know what's what I mean? the goal with college? I was just riding the wave. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to school for like business back then. Mm -hmm. I was just riding the wave, um, end up getting bagged. Was it the same thing, hustling? Yeah, hustling, you know what I mean? Getting caught up again, violating probation, how all you, type of bullshit. How do you get caught? You got somebody there that, that's telling on you? Or like, what happens, bro? Um, I mean, honestly, you know, we in a small city. And like I said, when you got so much movements and you're running around. Drawing attention. Yeah, motherfuckers see you. Mm -hmm. Police see you. They stopping you. Petty bullshit. You riding. You know what I mean? Niggas getting stopped, searched. They yeah. finding shit, work, whatever the case may be. Like I said, that was regular niggas hustling, right. doing whatever. So, but you said you were already on probation at that point. Yeah, yeah. I was like, nigga, been on probation. I was on. I didn't get off probation till like late twenties. So, okay. At least you know what I mean. Like that was just a regular off and going thing. Type so, shit. what happens when you with that case? Does it violate your probation? Yeah, it violated or? me. They end up. Um, I got locked up. You know what I mean? Sent me to South Bay type mm. shit. You know what I mean? You know, regular how, shit. How much? Well, how much time did they give you? Uh, it was like, like a couple months. They couple had it months. sitting in and they reviewed it, brought me back out. You know what I mean? Like, I'm gotcha. good. My other case wasn't nothing crazy, crazy. And plus, okay. like I said, I was still kind of going to school. Mm -hmm. So I kind of like used that in my favor. You know what I yeah. mean? Uh, ended up going to a different school after that. But really just end up um, grinding and shit. And that's when I went back to school for music business and shit like that. Because I'm like, kind of, it kind of like woke me up. Like, damn, let me. Let me focus on what the fuck I need to do because niggas is stuck. I seen all my yeah. niggas. I seen a lot of money fly through and I seen how niggas was getting it. And I'm like, damn, how can niggas keep it? Right. <laughs> like, seen niggas got it, but how can Keeping we keep this, this shit? Uh, how can we keep the bread? I seen niggas do a lot for bread. You know what I mean? I was like, damn, like, met a lot of niggas, smart niggas. I know a lot of niggas even when I went in, I knew a lot of niggas in there. Yeah. <laughs> you know what from I'm saying? the streets. Yeah, from the streets and shit. It's like, damn, all my niggas is. Yeah. Niggas is in here, like. Do you get to a point where you kind of look around and be like, you know what, this ain't really something that I want to do well, anymore? Just like, <laughs> we bigger than that, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And almost like, I'm happy I was able to rec recognize it then and get like try to move around because you kind of like, we get PTSD, we get warped in a little circle yeah. out here. And that's I got niggas that's trapped in that circle out here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Getting locked up, coming out, getting locked up. The police know us. Yeah. We riding by any city, Boston, Brockton, Fall River. They're like, oh, they're, psh, what's up? Oh, yeah, we see you. Mm -hmm. Stadies know you like that. When Stadies start knowing you, it gets a little crazy. Gotcha. You know what I mean? You're doing shows, shit happening, like, shit get crazy. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know So what, I mean? what was that experience like being locked up? I remember my first time being locked up. It was only two weeks, but I felt like, man, I came out. It felt like so much happened in there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it was just a whole new world, One, man. I did not think I was getting locked up. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm I'm going to court regular day. You know what I mean? Regular. Yeah. Damn. Nigga, I had shit in the car. You know what I mean? Right. I got my car outside with. Damn. I was all, you know what I mean? I was all thrown off. You know what I well, mean? The, and then having to the sit. don't realize. Right? Yeah, and then like, having to sit. where's your car at? Your yeah, car I was, was in the yeah, parking lot? Now yeah. you gotta have people pick it up. Yeah, or like, pick what it happened? up. Have people yeah. empty the car out for family, get it, all type of crazy shit. Yeah. And like I said, I'm still a young nigga. So it's like. Damn. Still hiding shit from family and not mm. really, you know what I mean? And we don't realize we got to let our peoples know what the fuck is going on. You're real people. Right. You know what I'm so saying? So when you're at court, you're not, your parents don't even know you got Niggas this case Niggas don't know what the fuck going anything. on. Like, you wow. know what I mean? Like, yeah. Now yeah. I'm sitting like, fuck. And then how do they find out? You eventually get on that Nigga phone. Nigga sitting. You, you get on that phone? I ain't getting on. Shorty dropped the car off. Like, <laughs> and let her know, let them know what's happening. He's going to take there. college for a couple months. He's yeah. in college. That's what Haitians say when you locked up. He's <laughs> <Yep>. in college. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah. nah. Um, learning lessons, though. What's that initial conversation like with, with, with mom? <laughs> Yo, I ain't going to hold you. Uh, yeah, I just called in. But, you know, I got real folks. Mm -hmm. I got real folks. I got real family. Like, my uncle, like I said, got deported doing right. real shit, you know what I mean? He's, he can't come back. So mm -hmm. at the time I was too nervous. Right. I, ain't, I ain't overstand that. I got real folks. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's oh, a blessing. Going through it. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's a blessing to have real folks that's gonna ride with you no matter what. Mm -hmm. That motivates you to be even better. Like, nah, yeah. nigga. Niggas is with me no matter what. So like, I'm, why I'm doing this? You Did know you mean? feel like you let her down though? I know, lying, my, my, my mind still, wasn't there, cuz my gotcha. mind wasn't there. I was. Mm. I was on something else. My mind wasn't there. I was. I didn't even want to talk on the phone. I'm right, like, yo, fuck you, this you. phone. Yeah, yeah. I holler at niggas when I'm outside. I'm inside. I'm on different mentality. You know, when you inside, you on different mentality. You yeah. ain't. Nah, ain't. What happens? You get out. You still got that probation going on. I get out. I got the probation going out. Uh, by the grace of God, phone was clicking for interviews and shit type mm -hmm. shit. So 
end up getting a little job for the probation, let them know what's going on. Yeah. And honestly, that was my first time kind of fasting from weed and certain shit. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So now I really I ain't smoke mm-hmm. in a minute. So I kind of held that for a little bit a year or two, was working out more, got, you know what I mean? Was so, it- was it the urines? Were you getting urine for probation? Is that why? Uh, no, smoking? I was because I ended up doing a little time in the bay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like whatever. So by the time I came out, you would just I ain't stay clean. I've been smoking since I was twelve. Okay. You get know what I'm saying? Like every day we blowing. You get yeah. what I'm saying? So so you know that brought some clarity, and then I started realizing like, damn, why we gotta go to jail to get mm-hmm. clarity? Is this when you start taking thinking about the music? Yeah, started taking more music more seriously. Like I said, I wasn't taking it serious. We was doing some shit. Niggas asked for some shit, so we started. Mm-hmm. Shit started growing. It's just regular shit at this point, though. Like you know, everything is just regular. What was your probation experience like? Oh, my probation experience was horrible. Even with the job. Yo, but they cause they just wanted my head. You it's, get what I'm saying? They want your head. Yeah. Like I said, I was on probation for a while. They want your head. Like I done got in a fight with them niggas, all type of shit. Jumped over the counter. Damn. To the point, but to the point where, but I was trying to be on my dean. You know what I mean? Even the judge seen the judge was like, all right, fuck it, just see you in eight months. Don't get locked up. Yeah. Type shit. Cause me and that, you know what I mean? That shit wasn't working, especially when you really it was trying. Clashing. Like, yeah. yeah, nah. Especially when you really like, you know, trying shit, going to work and shit. Yeah. Like nigga, like, can't go to work do? and do this shit. You got me fucked up. And I really just took that to the judge and stood on that. And the judge kind of was like, overstood it. So I was like, all right, kind of worked in my favor. And all that on time and everything? Or did you Nah, have to nah, make I wasn't, I, you know, you got to play the game, my nigga. We in the game system, my nigga. They want, it's, th- th- this game's about bread. It's, it's, it, 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 this game's all about bread. So you got to show you paying. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got to show you giving a little bread. More or less show that you can make moves because. Niggas don't need to be on probation. That shit's a trap. Yeah. And I watched that. I watched my older niggas being a trap. And then I watched other niggas that's not in the trap make millions, move around, make shit happen. Like, that shit was motivating mm-hmm. me. I'm meeting niggas that niggas don't know. They in the dark, but they getting big bread that I seen niggas risk their life for. Yeah. And these niggas ain't even on that. I'm like, what the fuck? What yeah. the fuck? Like, what the fuck going on? So I had to really move around, like, even away from the city to see how the fuck shit moving. You know what I mean? From New York, Connecticut, Rhode Island, South Carolina. I'm down in Atlanta, Florida. Like, I'm moving around the West. Like, all right. Yeah. It's how niggas is really getting it. And I'm young. Like, I'm just calling my folks. Like, yo, I'm here. <laughs> like, what the fuck? But like I said, my network, you got to keep a strong network. My network always been strong and I've always been a solid nigga. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, if you stay solid, and you do what you say you're gonna do, you'll have a vast network. You know what I mean? So a lot of niggas burn bridges early. And I ain't never been the type to burn a bridge. Niggas the type to call me. Yeah. Like, yo, you can make this happen, let's make it happen. Like, Why do something. you think people burn the bridges like that? I think niggas grew up in a different era. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I grew up in an era where the first nigga to put me on dropped the P on me. That wasn't nothing to him. Mm-hmm. I could have ran off with it and shit, but that wasn't even the mental. The mental was bringing back some bread. Yeah. I don't remember if he even counted it. Mm-hmm. I just remember what numbers was going for that day, and we put that in his hand. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? And that was kind of the morals back then. Niggas was on different morals because we had older niggas that was, we seen how it was done. Mm-hmm. I ain't no, no other way. I already knew you run off. You got to be ready to... Okay, we're hustling weed back in the day. It's not legal yet now, but now the laws starting to change and everything like to change. that. How do you adapt? Shit, that shit's crazy. Like I said, my, I've been smoking since young, so my mom been on my ass, and I was able to use music and marketing. Just me being in music and knowing the community. Mm-hmm. The community knowing me, me doing music, me being an influencer, and able to use these companies to work together. You know what I mean? To the point where now... I work with a lot of big cannabis companies, smoke tobacco companies, and they need us because we the culture, bro. Mm-hmm. We the ones that's been in and out these streets. We the one that know what's going on. You feel me? And I don't stamp nothing that ain't real. So even before we was legal, when the little pop-ups was going on and they was doing great um, grow competitions, we was there. Yeah, We was in the cut. Bunch of celebrities fucking will be there, but nigga, we was there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like making sure, because at the end of the day, we still in the city and we moved the needle. You get what I'm saying? So I was able to leverage my skills, my neighborhood, my attributes, me being outside to work in my favor. You get what I'm saying? So now I work with dispensaries, getting um, old man leave, long way, mm-hmm. been able to leverage that um, to go to the West Coast. I got situations with corrupt now and 
So they how, support that. So how's it work? You helping people move their products? Like you said, I, I saw you with the the old man leaf thing yep. going on. Like, how's that? Were you just reaching out to these people? No, nah, reach out um, to you. No, nah, it's like it's more like since I got in this space with old man, it was different. Some some folks from L.A. had hit me up like, "Cheese, there's this company out here. They need somebody from Boston." That I and at the time, a lot of people was just sending me boxes and shit. Like, yo, we see you everywhere. We want you mm-hmm. with our shit and shit. So I was, you know what I mean? I was doing that. And this is like early influencer days before influencers right. was like, you know what I mean? So niggas was sending me boxes and we was doing pop-ups and, um, you know, just doing shit online. Psh, yeah. Popping the shit open, smoke products, different weed, CBD, all type of mm-hmm. shit was getting sent. So we're like, all right, bet. I'm like, damn, niggas is shipping, shipping CBD? Shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> Fuck right, my like, head right, up. So right. I'm like, all right, fuck it. Boom, they linked me with a company. Now we're doing the work and we got a great response from the community. You get what I'm saying? So we was able to sit down and they was like, yo, we need someone like you to represent the company. We just sat down, sat on my team. We came up with a plan to do marketing for them. Not only that, be able to have the products and shit like that. So, so you know, to this day, they're still one of my partners yeah. um, that I'm able to work with and one of the sponsorships. So it's really about, like I said, leveraging what you do best. And everybody knows me from growing up for smoking weed and having weed and catching cases with weed and shit mm-hmm. like that to the point where now it's legal and we've been able to cultivate it and have businesses and win like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So the shit is real. You know what I mean? Jeff, two times, I remember when he came outside, he's like, geez, I don't know how you got niggas selling weed outside. I'm like, well, <laughs> we're not selling weed outside. Right, right, we're right. giving weed. Because, you know, I started right, learning kinda. the law. Started tapping in with lawyers. Started seeing what was going on because I seen everybody else eating in the spaces that, nigga, we live in. Like, spaces that, that's my space. I've been doing that since right. a youngin. Like, nigga, I've been on that. I've been knowing niggas with plates and barrels and barrels of weed since I was a little oh, nigga. So right. it's like, how am I not capitalizing in this space? How are we not cultivating in this space? We started doing pop-ups and bringing different brands out from New York before they got big. And even to this day, we, it's like a community. Everybody you, knows each other. Do you remember th- that first event that you did? Kind of don't. Okay. But I remember the vibe. Like, I remember when I realized we had something going. Okay. When niggas from New York was coming down. Well, Five and them was coming down, like. Popping in, like, this is unannounced shit. You know what I mean? Like, we doing collaboration pop-ups and rappers is coming through to get weed. You know what I mean? And before, I was going out to, like, Rhode Island, shout out to Focus and the pharmacist. They was having private pop-ups, grower-based. You would have dudes like um, Nori and um, Cantrell Blue, Redman, and a lot of, like, legendary niggas. They was bringing this. I was meeting them. You know what I mean? Fucking with the weed shit. So what I was doing, I just wasn't seeing it as that big, but then the younger niggas was sliding through. Mm-hmm. Just to get weed though, it was like, yo, we heard this is where it's at. Yeah. And it was like, I was bringing niggas with the weed and I seen niggas started doing the cultivation to the, like to now, niggas are still doing pop-ups. So yeah. I love That's to dope. see that niggas can influence the culture like that. You know what I mean? And um, Why do you think collaboration is important? That shit is important. It's important because every million dollar company has over a hundred people in there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and not just million dollar, let me say billion dollar, trillion dollar, because that's where we at now. Mm-hmm. With these companies, a million ain't even no money no more. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Like, you want a billion dollar company, you need, you need like at least 20 dedicated motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? That's mm-hmm. like, yo, this is what we on. This is my responsibility. Let's push it. So it's like, with collaborations, that's our way to get to a bigger base, to get to okay. more people, to get people behind your shit. That's how we win, and I feel like our community doesn't do it enough. And that's when everybody else starts paying attention, when we start working with each other so much and make them want to work with us. So when you got out of the Bay that time, you haven't been back since? Not in the Bay. Okay, so you, but you did get in trouble. Okay, <laughs> it happened. No, it, ha- it happens. That, that's why it's called locked the bounce up, back. Uh, yeah, it yeah, happens. Nah, yeah, I got locked up not in the Bay. I was in Day County. You don't want to get locked up at the state. You know what I'm saying? It's not the right. same as here. It's very different. And that woke me up. Like, no getting locked up at a state. So talk about it. Miami. (laughs) What are the charges? How does it happen? More weed charges. uh, Florida don't play with the weed. They don't play with the weed. They actually ran down our hotel. Like, we had some shit on top floor. They ran down. How many many people got locked up? It was like, it was really just me, nigga. The nigga really was just hating because I was talking shit. Being a Boston (laughs) motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck y'all got going on? Uh, I'm like, what? (laughs) Uh, like, ah. Then Ooh. I was talking big shit because I had money in the safe. They didn't Damn. give a fuck about none of that shit. <laughs> Got Damn. transferred. Like, where the fuck I'm at? 
You in Dade County like, damn, I'm in Dade? They don't this even bring is you... crazy. So they don't got like a police station? They bring they right to the, the jail? Po- they brought me to the police station. Okay. So I'm thinking it's Book like... you, get yeah, your yeah. prints. I, I'm not even that. I'm okay. thinking we like Boston. So they're like, yo, I'm like, are you locking me? What? I'm about to bail out. I got money. Ah, ah. Bring me there. They bring me there. You know, they got niggas in the tank. Like, nigga, don't move me in that tank. Leave me by myself. I'm talking big shit. Boom. We in there. They're like, all right. They letting me talk my shit too. They're like, nah, you, all right. I'm thinking I'm the man and shit. Yo. <laughs> you know what I mean? Boom. I'm thinking they bringing us out to go do paperwork. Mm, all that. Whatever, yeah. whatever. We like in a dark room. They got us chained up. We end up in this dark room. I'm like, fuck going on? This shit stopped feeling like South Bay. Mm. It stopped feeling like, <laughs> <laughs> it stopped feeling like the Bay. <laughs> Boom. That's what happened. They transferred us over right today. And that's how they process go. They bring you right. Um, we end up staying there a couple days. We end up seeing like one of the night court shits. They had the judge on the TV, your lawyer on a speakerphone. I was petrified, nigga. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was holding niggas from out of state, but ended up getting cool with some Jersey niggas. They ended up posting bail for me, actually, because we was all in there together on some shit. Like, oh, met bro. each other in there up north, niggas, because it right, was different, right, right. different tanks. Their tanks was different. They was holding like 60 niggas in a tank, rotating niggas. And it was talking about niggas sleeping on the floor. We wasn't going for that. We was talking about trying to take a nigga off the bed. Mm. That nigga was not having it. It was mm. like a big thing. So that ended up kind of moving, you know what I mean? Yeah, moving yeah, shit yeah. through. By the Must grace of God. good to get out, though. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm like, nah, this ain't going. Another uh, one of those wake-up calls. But, like, what's what's the process now? Like, you just visit. Like, do you have to go back to court? Like, do nah, you kind of squash it while you're down pay, there? Like, I had to pay them niggas some shit. That shit's about bread, bro. Always. The, you know what I mean? The system's about bread. Have your bread ready when you're outside for these lawyers, for your different shit going Especially on. Especially a place like Florida. It's a lot of tourists. Yeah, Florida, Atlanta. There's a lot of rules. Know the rules to where you're going. Mm-hmm. The laws is different. You know what I mean? Um, niggas is carrying different. Niggas can shoot different. You know what I mean? Like, you just got to know your law. Yeah, you stay in your ground, all that yep. shit. So, you're like, it's a lot of shit that, you know, a lot of shit's going. Just mm-hmm. know where you, you know what I mean? What year do you make that move to Atlanta, man? <laughs> and, and why? I end up going, like... It's like four years ago now. Um, I was doing a lot of tours, passing through. Um, This this Grammy producer, Jay Beach from Connecticut, called my producer, Louie Rock. Boom, 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 some Atlanta moves, come down for a week type shit. Uh, We made some call, we talked about some business, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, You know, type, he was handling some business. I'm like, oh yeah, I got you, boom. End up down there, handled the business. Yeah, handled the business. He was fucking with niggas hard bodies. Like, yo, I want to add you to my situation, my label. Um, so I ended up going out there with some label shit. He just did Nicki Minaj's project. Um, that's doing big right now. So, you know, he put me in a network of good people. I've been down there grinding, you know what I mean? Just, um, like I said, really using my assets to make the best out of everything. And Absolutely. I've been getting blessed by God to be, like I said, around legendary niggas, just doing legendary shit all the time. Like, I don't even like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I just, you know what I mean? Like, paint the picture, blessing. paint the picture of Atlanta. For me, man, I've never been to Atlanta. I, I, I would call it Black Hollywood. Okay. I, I mean, I, and if you're in the right circles, like I said, I was able to jump in there and be around the right circles because of who I'm cool with through the streets and through everything. Like, you know, nigga, we been them niggas. You know what yeah. I mean? I ain't gonna hold you. I ain't gonna, like, we just been them niggas. So it's like knowing the right niggas and knowing the right circles, I end up being with some real legitimate niggas. I don't even got a name though. It's mm-hmm. like every time I'm with somebody of that, cloth, you know what I mean? I'm of that cloth. So it's like, yeah. that's what the fuck is going on. And the A is a breeding place for that. I mean, being in Boston or even New England, I had to cultivate that. We had to work with people. Yeah. So when shit was going on, obviously we was around, we was around the mix when certain niggas is coming now, it's popping out, but that's niggas working yeah. it. Out there, we in the mix if you in the mix. So for me, it's been a blessing, you know what's, what I mean? What's your favorite part about like the culture down there, bro? Uh, You just... Uh, if you about your business and you got good quality, niggas gonna niggas will respect it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like um, niggas ain't know me from a hole in wall, but like I said, I came down there. I'm stepping on what I do, my business, my music, and niggas is fucking with me. Like I'm yeah. from there, booking me to come to shit. Right. Like I'm straight, nigga, nominating me for awards and mm-hmm. all type of shit. So it's like. I love that. You know what I mean? That's that's so love. Besides, like just I guess the size of the city. Why do you think Atlanta has a lot more success, like musically, as compared to Boston? What yeah, you- it's not even the size. You know what it is right now? It's just a hub where at one point New York was that hub, right? New York was that hub. I, 
used to do my shows and then go to New York because New York, shout out to Jay Berry, he had me open up for all type of niggas, Tory Lanez and Joe yeah. Buttons and all that shit, and they was showing love. I'm in town, Lusser called me like, yo, you in town? Throw me on a fly, like, oh mm -hmm. shit, I'm thinking I'm super lit, but that was the culture of what was going on in New York at the time. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And right now, um, I just feel like it's shifted down to Atlanta, okay. and that's where niggas is at. Um, and you kind of got to be where it's at. You know what I mean? Like a lot of my, and I, what I learned is a lot of motherfuckers from their place living in Atlanta at the yeah. time. Dirk was living in Atlanta, fucking yeah. Nas living in Atlanta. All these motherfuckers I see in their hometown yeah, living in Atlanta, but they still shooting videos at home when I realized how big our culture is. We got a culture up here. We got shit that niggas don't see when they see me. Only real niggas that met real Boston niggas have an understanding of who I am. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah, you know I mean, yeah. yeah, I can that, tell you. When you say mad apparent, yeah, like, they yeah. know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, they know what I'm talking about. So, but that's, but that's, but that's good too, because now we're showing our story. Yeah. Right? And I'm able to bring a light to what the fuck is going on. And even platforms like this, niggas see me on this and be like, damn, they got, yeah. Fuck, so, them niggas <laughs> got motion going on out there. Like, yeah, oh, damn, there's a lot of street niggas. Like, damn, okay, like, damn, cheese, you're not a one on one. Like, yeah, I'm a one on one, yeah. but. This is nigga, this is how we breed them out here. We breed them different. We on a different mentality mm. and almost to wake up our mentality like cuz I realized being out of state like we got PTSD. Mm -hmm. The way we be moving, the way we think, we on point, we on guard, but we need to be on point on guard for the right shit. We need to move together stronger, mm -hmm. especially even if we are not fucking with each other. If we out of town, nigga like I remember I used to go to Miami and see D hats. Go to one hotel, you see mad D hats. Like, mm -hmm. damn, them niggas from the D's deep. You end up really tapping in with them niggas. Them niggas not even together. Right. But right. them just being outside like that made a presence. You get what I'm saying? And I feel like it's about to be our time to be outside making a presence like that. So when you're in Atlanta, what's like the perception of Boston to them? You got you got two sides, right? Because um, you got the sides that a lot of people got family out here. They, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, they know what's going. Okay. Then you got the other side that just don't know. Right. They just don't know. And Atlanta's full of people from different cities, from Chicago, from, from everywhere. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. L.A., South Carolina, Tennessee. You meet people from everywhere else before Atlanta. That's yeah. why I said it's so it's so much mixed in. But niggas don't know what to think. That's what I'm saying. We giving them the palette. We kind of mm -hmm. painting the palette for them. That's the beauty of that. Yeah. That's the beauty of us kind of coming out the mud like you know I feel like coming out the mud when I'm outside a nigga from Boston like yo that nigga's from Boston like, yeah. he happy he excited nigga he mm -hmm. coming like yo da 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 and most of them niggas be knowing me cause I'm really from the town nigga really went to public school nigga was really out here They're like yo I changed my name Yeah, I was Cheese Bankroll before so when niggas see me they get re-excited like yo my nigga yo mm -hmm. da 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 so yeah nah it's love so talk a little bit more about what else it is you do, man. You wear you wear many hats. Yeah, you got yeah. the you got the clothes. Yeah, I've been tell the people where they can find it and then like yeah, why you, could, you wanted to start it and everything. Find you know me, find me on all social media, Boston Cheese, B O S T O N C H W E Z. You know what I mean? We make I I made it a point to say, yo, the same way I'm hustling on everything else and we took all them risks to do everything. We took big risks. Boston niggas up north, we take big risks, nigga. Niggas be trying to hit banks and Life or death. money orders. Niggas be taking bitches <laughs> out. Like, niggas, niggas take big risks. And I said to myself, and I've been around niggas, took a lot of risks, a lot of work, a lot of fucking niggas did a lot of shit. And I said, I'm going to take them same risks with myself mm -hmm. and put that same energy into myself and my businesses and the shit that I'm doing. And that shit was making money like niggas is selling drugs. You know what I'm saying? Selling hats and selling gear and certain shit. Like, I made this hat. It's called Luxury Hat. You know what I'm saying? Like, I put my energy into that. So, that was, that's was that been helpful to the point where niggas, I've been able to help niggas too. You know what I mean? Niggas that came out of their situations. Like, yo, bro, this, you know what I mean? This is another route yeah. to get paid. This is another, you know what I mean? Because it ain't about being selfish about the shit. It's just, it's just, it just is what it is. Yeah. Like, and it's about inspiring each other. You know what I mean? Like, I do Absolutely. the directing and shit. I get hired to be on sets and shit, but I want to inspire other niggas to do that shit too. That's why I see you doing that shit. I'm like, bro, stay on your shit because Appreciate you. there's bread. There's a, there's a six piece. Nigga, there's a honey bun right there. 100,000 a nigga can get with a little bit of work in it. If mm -hmm. you know what, you know what I mean? You know how to, how to move the sauce and it ain't enough of us working together to make that happen. Because you yeah. do it once, 
you could do it again and again and again. So, yeah, that's what's been motivating me. You know what I mean? So now I'm in a, a couple movies. You might find me in some movies. Yeah. Find some shit on Hulu, on, on Tubi. There's a joint called Rack Aids. Mm -hmm. Y'all gonna love that. It's about scamming and all type of shit. <laughs> right. Got some shit called For the Gram. Uh, I'm on some shit with Gravy. I've been popping out in parents in some videos with Lil Duval. Like I said, my phone yeah. ringing. You, you know ever what I'm look, Do you ever like look at what you're doing and kind of be like, damn, man, I'm like, I'm really doing this? Yeah, like, no, no, nah, like I ain't gonna hold you. It'd be, I gotta stop sometimes. Like, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, when I did the BT, I did the BT red carpet for the last two years. Niggas was calling me, yo, I see you on the red carpet. I see you on the red carpet. <laughs> It's like, yeah, but I'm I'm trying to work so hard every day. Every day I'm trying to move my phones ringing, not in just different states. Like my phone, like, I'm going to Vegas, I'm going here, I'm going there. I'm coming back home. I'm bringing this energy back home. Like, nah, nigga, that's, because these are the niggas that know me. Yeah. I'm out here with strangers. These are the niggas that, you know what I mean? So what's something that you think we could take from the culture and the success that they've had in Atlanta with the hip hop, especially, that we could kind of use up here? What we got to start doing, like you said, is collaborating. Even if niggas ain't fucking with each other, we gotta be bringing excitement mm. into our own regions. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And not, like I said, I'm from Mattapan, you know what I mean? We gotta mix it up. Mattapan and the Roxbury, or Mattapan yeah. and Brockton. I was gonna say, yeah. or Springfield, Malden. or Connecticut. Why not? Yeah, why the hell like, not? Yeah. We gotta mix the pot up. You know, we gotta be rapper for rapper. Mm -hmm. It could be model or mm. producer. We gotta mix the pot and we gotta create our own class like we gotta have a class of niggas we know that's taking this shit serious niggas that's moving mm -hmm. niggas that's getting attention and likes i don't give a fuck if he's a TikToker or whatever the fuck he is nigga get in this video yeah because your following needs to hear what the fuck got going on my people need to check in with your shit we supposed to be creating our own atmosphere you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying so are you excited for the near future of uh massachusetts hip-hop yeah no women yeah. hip-hop's getting there like like i see a lot of dope people doing dope shit too. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Some people even bigger than me, people that we done, we was chilling in the Max Blues cafes in Brockton. <laughs> you know what I'm right. saying? We chilling and I'm watching Bia do her thing. You know Shout what I'm saying? Dope. Yep. Chilling, we in fuck yeah, what was that? At the time it was like 401 something in Rhode Island, Jordan Lucas came in there with a cigarette, mm -hmm. opening up and Niggas was looking like cigarette. What the fuck? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like I remember these moments, and now look where he's at. You get what yep. I'm saying? And you know, you got everybody taking their strides. And when you look up, you see niggas. Before yeah. you ain't see niggas. Now you kind of like, if you really f fishing through, you can see niggas. We all over. We got the lyric Jones. She's in L. A. Right? She's doing her thing on the conscious rap level, like. And she's been making her name, but when she hear Boston, niggas' ears is perking mm. up. So we got people that's becoming movers and shakers in the industry. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's what's important. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Absolutely. That's what's important. Absolutely. I feel like Boston's always had big impact on just, you know, this country. Yeah, nah, in, yeah. In general, bro. Yeah, in of course. General, sure. Of course. We the, we the trendsetters, you know? But you know what it is? Like I said, we got to get excited about each other. Mm-hmm. I'm starting to see collaborations and different shit like that. We got to keep doing that. Promoters got to fuck with the people that's moving the streets because you want people to come. We got to support each other. That's Absolutely. what it comes down to. Support each other and create our own ecosystem mm -hmm. out here because there's fans, there's people watching. It's different from Atlanta because Atlanta has a big hip hop. Like the whole state might, like they have a big area that listen to hip hop. Right. Boston or Massachusetts or New England might mm -hmm. not be the same numbers. Right. Right. So we got to figure out how to work that um, to our advantage because right. they're our pockets so we can win and hit the numbers and we got to be business wise and we got to put out, we got to put our money up. Yeah. We're not putting our money up. We think in this game, it's just going to pick you up out the seat. That's not how the game works. You know what I mean? Me being in the A, I'm watching niggas spend the nigga they spend it. You gotta invest in yourself. You nigga, nigga, you gotta put in. You gotta put in. Mm -hmm. And then you gotta make, you know what I mean? Make money. Once you making money, that's it. You know what I mean? So that's always been my goal. That's why I strive to uh, make capital. You know what I mean? Bookings and shows. We got some shit coming up this weekend. We doing a um, smoking in the movie theater, cannabis joint. Partnered up with some growers and That's dope. got some sponsorships from some dispensaries and you know, yep. like I said, this is our space. You know what I mean? So I'm blessed to be able to come from behind the wall from the shit and now be able to work with different companies 
across all over. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And even be able to barter deals. I bartered a deal for Boosie so, and um, another vape company. You know what I mean? They had no way to get to them. I had to, I had to route. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And the, you know what I mean? Took my little change. I mean, like yeah. everything is business, but I'm blessed to be able to use my resources and the shit I love to make money. So that's what I would tell niggas to do. Like, be able to use what you can and be dedicated to the point where you can make money yeah. off that shit. Like, why, why is it important for you to come back home? This is where I'm from. Like, it ain't no, it ain't no capping it. <laughs> Just, you know what I mean? Like, I'm really a Mattapan kid that was on Blue Halab. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's really just what it is. Like, I'm still reaching out. I just... Uh, I just did a partnership with Juice Man. Well, um, higher level juice. Yep, higher level juice. He's a local brand, and like I said, for me, it's about partnering up, and I could we could bring him other places that mm -hmm. he might not be able to reach, and him be able to work with me. And I got someone from home that can keep my name ringing in. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We keeping, we taking over everywhere. I can't be everywhere at once. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but we taking over everywhere, and we are gonna do it together. And like I said, united, that's how we gonna really rock niggas to sleep. So when we step in the spot. They're like, oh, no, nah, them Boston niggas is here. Mm -hmm. The mass niggas is here. They about to turn it. You know what I mean? Like, niggas might blow a little back, da, 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 but that's what gets that shit going. Yeah. When you step in the spot and motherfuckers is like, ah, you know what I mean? Like, I'm a vibe. When I come in the spot, I'm big energy, big vibe. They're like, yo, we need cheese here again. <laughs> like, I just did Super Bowl, a private Super Bowl event, because niggas is like, yo, nah, cheese is, ah. Yeah, we fucking with cheese. Like, we want what he's bringing, and I'm finding ways to make shit dope. That's the illest shit I heard Dame Dash say. He said, yo, make shit dope. Make shit dope. Even if niggas ain't fucking with you, like, shit. That yeah. shit was hard. Right. That shit was hard, like, you know what I mean? So, yeah, like, that's what I'm on. I'm on fly shit, dope shit, like, that's it. Everything we do got to be fire. So I don't even be <laughs> thinking. He might look back like, damn, I was really on the cup. I was really on Soul Train. I was really on with nigga Lil Baby chilling in the commercial. I was really yeah. with... I ain't even thinking that. I'm like, nigga, I'm really trying to get some money out this motherfucker and set up some <laughs> shit to keep this shit running, what, my nigga. What's been the the fav your, your favorite thing you've done since you've been in Atlanta? Uh, is it the people? Meeting people? Is that important to you? The network? Meeting people is good, but like when a nigga that is like, oh, that level is calling me like, yo, Cheese, I need this to happen. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Bangladesh is hitting me up like, yo, Cheese, like, yo. That's yo, get a fucking, yo, <laughs> geez, you know what I need. Get that nigga, we gonna, yo, meet us at the hotel, da, da, da. like, all right, and I might bring a video nigga, we might do some fly shit, yeah. and, you know what I mean? Like, that shit to me is the moments that is real, you know what I mean? When I'm out there alone, and I'm feeling like, damn, I'm alone, I'm out here grinding, and then Daz comes to me, he's like, nah, cheese, we out here for a purpose. Like, you with us type shit, da, 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 da. like, yeah. dumb shits is the moments that I'm like, damn, it lets me know. I ain't tripping. I'm on my right path. And, you know what I mean? I'm a bean nigga. I don't dick nobody. Yeah. I pause. You know what I mean? No diddy. I ain't, you know what I mean? On oh, nobody. <laughs> so it's like, niggas see what I'm doing. Niggas will drag me in. Like, cheese, hop on this shit, nigga. Yeah. Like, what the fuck, nigga? Hop on this verse, nigga. Come on, nigga. Like, you know what I mean? So that energy oh. is real. You know what I mean? Like, real love between you and your folks. What's the newest music thing you got going on right now? Are you got What's distribution with Empire right now. Um, so that's been a blessing, um, working right. directly with them, working on the business end with them too, marketing for some of the other people and clients, but um, okay. got some records I'm about to leak out, Trust No One. I got another record called Ass So Fat, produced by Wonder, he big producer in Atlanta, did shit for 2 Chains and um, Jeezy and a bunch of niggas. We actually about to tap in and do a project, probably that's release fire. it through Empire, so you know. What's the newest thing that's already out if people want to um, take a look It's called at it. Bitch I'm God. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That's out right now. Video out. Directed yeah. by myself. You know what I mean? Me and my team shot that. Big red camera shit. Big studio shit. I've been doing a lot of directing and shit too. Been on sets with a lot of motherfuckers. Tinks. Like I said. The um, Boosies. Even um, King Vaughn before he passed away. A lot of motherfuckers. So it's like learning the game too and applying to what I got going on. And Honestly, I, I had to create my own tunnel, bro. I like to just do what the fuck I got to do. I got a lot of niggas that you know what I mean? Everybody's trying to figure it out. You know yeah. what I mean? A lot of niggas trying to figure it out. Even in this game, you'd be surprised who's trying to figure it out. But working hard at it, that shit'll hit. Mm -hmm. And when shit start oh, hitting, yeah. it start hitting. And when niggas know you good for something, like, they know you good for something. Like, shout out to yeah. Usher and his family and his little brother. I just designed their jackets for wow. their studio. You know what I'm saying? They're like, cheese, we need some drip. Like, yo, That's blah, 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 blah. I designed the shit. We did like three different jackets. Um, and now they selling them shits. 
You know what I'm saying? Like That's they right, booming, bro. like Star Studios, they got Lloyd in the jacket, Stevie mm. J's, like all these motherfuckers. It's like, damn, I ain't even, my mind ain't, don't, ain't even taking it all in sometimes. But then I'm like, damn, like niggas is doing that. Yeah. That's what we doing. And I'm blessed just to be able to do my passion coming from here. Like some niggas think like, damn, niggas ain't, niggas can't. Like, nah, we could do anything. We just got to do it. We really yeah. just got to get up and do the shit and stay tapped in with our folks and we could really move some shit around. What you know advice I mean? would you give to somebody trying to be an entrepreneur? The realest shit I ever heard. Not even just recently, I don't know if you know Ray Daniels. He's like a big music executive. He was saying, we went to a conference. He was saying like, yo, he's like, yo, if you're doing something, make sure you love doing it. Mm -hmm. Because there's going to be time when you're doing it for free. You're doing it on the arm. You're doing it for love before it starts paying. And you're going to take sacrifices. You're going to sacrifice something. And then when it starts rewarding you, you, yeah. you know what I mean? You're going to enjoy that. But you're going to know like you got to love doing it. Because yeah. if you don't love doing it, you're going to miss that moment to do it when that shit can mm -hmm. change your life. Absolutely. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like I, just, I make clothes because I wanted to put on fly shit. I grew up being a young Haitian nigga whose mm -hmm. mom wasn't buying Jordans for him. I had to go outside and do illegal shit just to get sneaker money. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, like, we changing the narrative. Yeah. Like, my niggas is making sneakers. I think it's easier, too, to give somebody my money if I see what they do. They love doing what they're doing. Whereas opposed to, like, this dude seems like he just in it for the money. Exactly. You, you, like, that thirst oozes out. Where yeah. if you're passionate about something, yeah. it's, it's contagious. Yeah. You know, and you kind of want to, yeah. you know what I mean? Instead of feeling like people's hands are in your pocket yeah they're like, yeah Here, yeah you and that's go. What they want is. that they want that vibe they want to feel good how you feel you know they yeah. see you carrying yourself you dress fly you know yeah. what i mean they yeah. want that so yeah it's, it's easy it's easier find something you love that's important find something sure. you love you know what i mean and love to do it Absolutely. and do that shit yeah don't wait until the bag drop because now you're going to miss out you know what i mean me not waiting i ain't never worried about no more right. views what's, what's the hardest part about it the hardest part is it's your dream, not nobody else's. They're not gonna see it like you. It's just, see it. it's not nobody else's dream. You know what I mean? Like, I was telling niggas like, yo, niggas is worried about Spotify. I'm like, yo, nah, like this, th th nigga, these companies, these shits is fucking with me. Niggas are like, what, nigga, mm -hmm. what? I'm like, all right, but nigga, that my payout is way bigger than what the fuck niggas is touching. Yeah, I'm like, what advice would you give? My name is Cheese to the people. In music, as far as like the business side of it, it's music business, my nigga. So it's like people know the music side, but you know, it's the business. business. Okay, and you not winning in business unless you in the green. That's business. <laughs> if you in the red, you not winning in business. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Now there's a passion to it, and there's a business to it. You win it just for the passion, or you just doing it for the love, or are you doing it for the business? Because if you're doing it for the business, you got to invest in yourself. And don't you think all this shit is happening without a nigga putting his bread up? Yeah. That shit is taken, nigga. What's that your shit. favorite part about being an entre entrepreneur? I love making money out of nowhere. I'm like, I love sitting down like, oh, I'm chilling. Like, oh, shit, I just made 700. Like, what? How you made 700? Oh, I just sold five hoodies. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, what? Like, <laughs> yeah, like. So what's something about going in business for yourself that, you know, people may not know about? That shit ain't for the week. You know what I mean? You want, it's like week. drugs. You want shit for the low, you got to buy for the high. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you can't, you're not going to make the same buying an ounce, breaking it down as the same as you make buying 10, buying 10 pounds. Yep. So you got to put your money where your mouth is. And you got to believe in yourself the same way. You got to take them same risks. Okay. And that maybe that's what helped me. I've always took the, the street hustle and brought it to corporate. I took the rap hustle and brought that to products because it's like, nigga, it's the hustle. Yeah. It's the hustle. And if you're not going to hustle for yourself, you're going to have to get up and hustle for somebody else. Right. Like, that's, 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 that's what it is at the end of the day. Yeah. If you don't want to get up and grind for somebody else, you got to get up and hustle for yourself, nigga. Nine to five. Mm -hmm. Get the fuck up. Make calls for yourself. Yeah. Like, nigga. Like. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, say I'm from Atlanta, bro, and I ask you, what's your, what's your favorite part about Boston, man? Uh, my favorite part about Boston? As we getting money niggas. Nah, but if I'm going to tell them, <laughs> I'm going to tell them, uh, I'm honestly going to tell them about the weed. Boston got great weed, my nigga. Okay. We got to stand up on our weed. Boston got great weed. I was stepping that's on cool. our shit from the East Coast niggas too, because Vegas, your weed cool. ain't hitting. Maine, Boston Maine weed. Is straight too. Man, that's what I'm saying. New England, New England, yeah. New England we stepping on shit. We can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with niggas. Mm -hmm. And the food, 
is busting in the culture. You know what I'm saying? In the culture. Like, we got the most culture with every every different group is different. Like, there's no, like, the white people in Atlanta are not like the white people in Boston. Right. You're not going to find a Bobby in, mm-hmm. in Atlanta. Right. Because <laughs> <laughs> you being you, bro. You got that's what I'm it, saying? Yeah. And uh, that's what I say, like. You know, we we be ourselves. You know what I'm saying? We be ourselves. We be. I mean, I mean, we a little bit PTSD. Mm -hmm. I realize that. You know what I mean? Leaving out, but I think um, that's how we made. That's what great. That 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 that's what makes us great. All right. We watch everything. We on point. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, but we always big impactfully, bro. Like yeah, everything we do. So so talk about. I like to reach out to the youth a little bit, man. What advice? What advice would you give to somebody sitting in DYS right now, mm. bro? Yeah, especially um, in the jails, it's never too late. Never too it ain't late never to too great, late, like, bro. That's what I say. Hell yeah. You know, I have a lot of niggas. Shit, a lot of my a lot a lot of my niggas got F's. You know what I'm saying? Even in Atlanta, like, I got niggas from Philly, niggas from all over, niggas got. F's niggas done went through shit. One of my niggas just, he did a 12, he did a 10, but he's on set. Mm-hmm. He's on set working, living the time of his life. That's dope. Fucking bad bitches. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Making movies and movies, making money. Niggas is riding big body. We plotting on mansions. You can do this wow. shit. You can do this shit. You gotta, you, you, niggas can do it. Mm-hmm. That's it. Niggas can do it. Like, I've seen it, nigga. I've seen it with my own eyes. Niggas can do it. Talk, we'll talk about the future, bro. What is it? What do you? What you know are what some mean? of the, uh, the 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 long term goals you got? The for future yourself, is bro? keep my niggas out of jail. Stay out of jail. I'm getting calls from one of my brothers right now. He got locked up in Georgia. Damn. He not even. A, you know what I mean? He's a big director, nigga. But you know, we came from the streets. We mm-hmm. all trying to change our life. We nigga, we brilliant. Mm-hmm. I know brilliant street niggas. I know niggas doing shit from jail that niggas outside can't do. They doing shit from jail. They got niggas outside waiting on them. When them niggas call me, I had to remind them niggas like, yo, my nigga, you brilliant nigga. Remember that. Yeah. And use your brilliance for brilliant shit. Don't get caught up in this shit. Because, you know, you can get crazy. Niggas got me caged out. Niggas can't cage me. Mm-hmm. I'll do whatever. You know what I mean? We can get like that. You know what I'm saying? But now nah, we brilliant. So we got to be able to do be brilliant. We end up in situations. I got a brother in a situation right now. I'm trying to tell him to hold his head. Mm-hmm. All my brothers in jail, hold your head. Use your Thanks. time for why shit. Study. Look at who's getting paper, nigga. That's the perfect time to see how niggas is getting paper and study that shit. Nigga, come out doing... Nigga, you don't need no degree to do real estate. You don't need no degree to do sales. That's who's getting money. Mm. Like, nigga, come out, work with a nigga like who's getting it. Film, like... Niggas need bullies too. Absolutely. <laughs> gotta be open minded. Yeah, like, <laughs> but at the end of the day, we gotta be smart and look at the money, my nigga. We Facts. I started being a dumb criminal and try to be a smart criminal. Then you realize the smartest crim nigga the, uh, nigga, the world is full of crooks, bro. Even niggas doing their businesses, niggas is doing that. Like, nigga, I'm proud of my little niggas hopping online doing what the fuck they doing. Mm. Cause they find a new way to whip. Niggas used to be outside forcing it. Outside in the cold, trying to sell some gems, like yeah. niggas is whipping a new way. Like I still try to talk to them, like yo, you gotta be a little bit smarter. But I'm proud of that. Yeah. Niggas is using their mind, like that's white that's what collar crime. You know what I'm saying? That's white collar crime. Be that's, creative. That's Use your mind. Years, like you know what thinkers, I'm saying? Thinkers. Yeah, like and you know, think about how to do it the right way, and not even the right way, the way for you to win. Do it your way. Yeah, that's like because there is no there's no right way. Right. We don't know who's playing clean. Just we do don't it. know who's playing dirty. We don't know what the fuck going on here. Yep. How these motherfuckers is playing whatever, motherfucker. We just got to play our own way and right. know that every level comes different different treachery. You're going to always get higher and deal with different treachery where mm-hmm. you got to kind of like, uh, mm-hmm. and we got to be prepared. We got to be militant and keep strong niggas around us because that is important. Mm-hmm. You got to keep strong right. folks around you. That's why we say the streets is dead. They dead, but they can't be dead because there's real niggas still here. We got to move smarter, though. We just got to move smarter, move wiser, and share information. Stop gatekeeping. We just got to share it because it's like, <laughs> we got to share it because it's like, it's wasted. Knowledge there's mad shared, money here. There's mad money here. There's mad cities here. There's mad states here. Like, 
Niggas got to move together, bro. That's all it is, bro. I appreciate you coming through. I don't mm -hmm. know if there was anything else you wanted to touch on before I Shit, let you go, Shit, man, you already know. Just tap in online. Boston Cheese on everything. Show love. If you from the town, reach out. Word. Helping niggas, doing business with niggas. That's what it's about. That's why I came here to support my brother. Yeah. Everybody in this space. Uh, if you in the jails, hold your head. Write them scripts. You know what I'm saying? Study, be ready to come out and be a beast. And it ain't never too late, my nigga type shit. We appreciate y'all. You already know. Proud of you. I see you it's doing big on, things, man. That's all we doing. So, we keeping so it I heavy. I want to bring you up, man, guys. You know, it. it is what it is. Not a pan where you're at. What's next is what you make it. Be Luke, Boston Cheese. Yes, sir. On that note, we out of here. We out.